Hi, I'm Sylvia from Two Meerkats, and today I want to talk to you about my Africa Twin CRF 1000D 2017 model and why I'd still buy it over the 220 model today. Uh, for a start, all kitted out like it is now, it's 30% cheaper than the current model. Number one is the stability of the Africa Twin, and that's because of the way Honda's designed their raking trail on the forks. Whether we're talking about the 2017 or the 2020 model, doesn't matter. They're both in the category of the best large ADV bikes on or off the road. And now we're talking gritty roads, gravel roads, problem roads, doesn't matter. This bike will get you straight through in a smooth path. Okay, number two is suspension. And Honda sets it up on the 2017 and 2020 model as soft out the factory. And that suits me perfectly. Long trips, you get to the end of it, no fatigue and comfort all the way. Number three is the DCT, and in my opinion, that gives it the most usable power of any ADV bike that I've ever ridden. When I put this bike into S3 T1, I have the confidence to do any start that I ever want to do. When I'm at a traffic light, getting onto a tricky situation on the highway, I just know that I can turn the throttle and away I go. Hill starts, breeze. You are never in the wrong gear with the DCT. Number four are the two sets of brakes on the handlebars. The normal right front brake, and then the left, which controls one of the two sets of calipers on the back wheel. Number five are the core functions. Now, I have to say, these are all available with one press of a button. The gravel button, the ABS off, even the traction, T1, all available with one press of a button. Can't say the same for the 2020 model. Number six is U-turns. And this bike has got the tightest turning circle of any ADV bike I've ever ridden. And I mean, you might think that you don't do U-turns often, but really you do. Whether the DPS has sent you up the wrong road, you have to go back to put the, get the camera that's sitting on the tripod there taking your shot, anything like that, road works. You gotta do U-turns often and to have the confidence of knowing that in tight spaces, you can still maneuver the bike easily. That's a great thing. Number seven is the appearance of the bike. And in my opinion, Honda have captured the classic Dakar bearing look of the original bikes with this one. And on top of that, they've got these beautiful tricolor mix to go with it. I think that's the best one. Number eight is the reliability. I've had this bike now for two and a half years. We've ridden on some really rough roads together and it's been perfect, 100% reliable, no oil leaks, no problems. Perfect. Okay, number nine is the center of gravity. I don't know how they did it, but they've made it really low. And coming to this bike off a of KTM 1190, I really felt it. It made it so much easier to ride with having the battery low, even the toolbox has been put low. It makes it feel as if the weight of the bike is a lot less than it actually is just because the CFG is low. Number 10 is slow speed riding. When you're in congested traffic, you really want to know that you can just concentrate on the traffic ahead and not have to deal with the bike stalling or anything like that, no matter how slow you're going. This bike is perfect for that. And when you get to the mud, you just turn the traction control off and you don't have to worry about all that arm pump business. It doesn't happen. The bike is taking care of it for you. Number 11 is MX boot friendly. I know, you think that's a weird topic to consider? I don't. And I'm standing up the bike and trying to change gear, it causes instability. But on this bike, of course, you're not doing that. Your feet are planted on the pegs, your knees are gripping the tank, and your head is up looking at the road ahead. It's just perfect. Nothing to distract you. Makes for great riding. Point number 12 is old tech versus new. And yeah, I know that's a huge topic, but I've just selected two. One is the throttle cables. And two is Euro 4 versus Euro 5. Okay, so with throttle cables, if you have throttle cables in your bike, they're easy to repair. In a previous trip, trip on a previous bike, we've had to do it in the middle of the desert, no problem, five minute job. Try doing that on the 2020 version. The other thing is the Euro 4 versus Euro 5. 
there are many differences, but the main one is Euro 5 produces a hell of a lot of heat. And if you're riding around in Australia, in the desert, or even here by the coast, you are not going to want all that extra heat blowing on you. Some people might say that, you know, if you're not buying Euro 5, you're not saving the planet. But what, the production of a whole new bike is saving the planet? I don't think so. Hang on to your old bike, that'll save the planet a lot more. And I couldn't let you go without giving you a bonus feature. Unstallable. That's what this bike is. You never have to worry in a tricky situation that you're going to have a wheel lock up or it be in the wrong gear and it's going to stall. None of that. Never have to think about it. Unstallable. Okay, please press the subscribe button down below. It really helps the channel and we'll be able to make more videos like this for you.